Well, in this video, I want to introduce you in more detail to the action reflection learning model that we're going to be following in this unit of field education. As I said previously, the aim in field education is to draw on our ministry experience as a resource for learning so that we might learn about ministry, but also that we might learn about God. And to do that, we're following this action reflection model of experiential learning. Now, so that you've got a real example to be working through, I, I want you to, uh, to think of a particular ministry experience that you've been involved in uh, over the past month or so. Now, this is what our students will need to do each time that they meet with their supervisor over the course of this unit, you know, roughly once every four to six weeks. At those meetings, uh, the student needs to come prepared with a ministry experience that uh, you've begun reflecting on using the process that we're outlining here. Now, the reality is that in the course of your ministry, uh, you never have enough time to, to think over everything that you've done. Uh, instead, what we do is focus on uh, one event or, or one situation that might lend itself to, to further reflection and, and see what there is uh, to learn, what, what God has for us to learn out of that particular uh, experience. You know, often there'll be something that happened that, that sort of is still rolling around in your head, even though it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're the kinds of things that are worth paying some attention to. You know, it might be a conversation that was, that was difficult or, or, or it might be an activity that, that, uh, that was like hugely enjoyable and successful. And, uh, any sort of ministry experience that stayed with you uh, for some reason, whether it's for good reasons or, or bad reasons. Uh, particularly if there's uh, aspects of that experience that, that are somehow sort of left unresolved for you. Um, uh, something that's sort of slightly unsettling or something you'd like to explore further, well, that's uh, something worth reflecting on. So for now, uh, while we're learning the model, uh, whether, you're a, whether uh, you're a student or a supervisor, I want you to have a particular ministry experience uh, in mind. And so as we think about that experience, the first question uh, to think about is, well, what actually happened? Uh, the first phase uh, or the first sort of lens of theological reflection here is, is description. And the key here is to think about what actually happened. In as much detail as you can, uh, try to, to capture all of the relevant details uh, of what happened. Uh, what happened? When did it happen? Uh, who was involved? Uh, where were you uh, at the time? Who said what to whom? Uh, how did they respond? And so on. You want to pay attention to the things that were said and the things that were left unsaid. Uh, think about uh, what you were thinking about at the time, how, how you were feeling at the time. Uh, perhaps there were particular memories that, were, that the experience was bringing back to you at the time or was connecting with certain uh, desires um, and, and so on. You know, what often happens when we reflect on ministry is that we give a very limited perspective uh, on events. Uh, there are some people that they only ever see all the negatives. You know? And so whenever you ask them, how did, how did that go, then they can list all of the things that went wrong, uh, but they can be quite blind to, uh, to things that actually were, were quite good. And then others are, are the opposite. They, they only see uh, the things that were, that were positive and, and uh, forget about the things that perhaps needed a little bit more work. It might be that uh, sometimes people uh, dwell on the things that happened to you uh, and your own interactions, but you forget that there are a whole lot of other things going on. Other people were interacting in this situation as well that, that influenced uh, uh, what was going on. So in the description phase, what we're looking for is, is a comprehensive view of what actually happened as much as we're possible to sort of uh, stand uh, outside of the situation and give that sort of um, uh, 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 omniscient narration, perhaps, of, uh, of the things that are going on. When you come to the supervisory meeting, uh, supervisors can help a lot by asking questions that are going to explore this situation in more detail. And your aim at this point is to help students get a, get a clear picture on actually what happened. So that's description. After description uh, then comes analysis. Uh, having a clearer sense of what actually went on in the experience means that we're now ready to explore sort of behind and, and around uh, those events, uh, to think about why things happened as they did. Or think about what various aspects of the experience might mean, what, what significance they might have. 
So you might think about connections with other ideas or, or theories about human behaviour. You might have questions about the situation that, that you want to explore further. Maybe there's a hunch that you have about what's actually going on here and, and you'll need to think about how you might confirm uh, those, uh, those ideas somehow. Again, supervisors are very important and helpful at this stage because uh, you'll want to be helping the student to think about different angles uh, on a situation, perhaps prompting them to ask questions about specific aspects of what was going on that maybe they haven't been paying enough attention to. Once you begin poking around a situation, what you'll probably discover is that, that there's a stack of different things that you could analyse uh, further. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, it's a reminder of how productive thinking about our experience can be. You know, any one ministry experience holds holds a wealth of insight that that can be gained uh, once we pay close attention uh, to this uh, to this experience in all its richness and and depth. So you've got all these different sort of strands, all these things that are that could be interesting and uh, could uh, take lots of time in, in reflecting on. Uh, you want to narrow down to, to one or, or perhaps two lines of analysis. And mostly, it's up to you, that is you, the student, uh, in terms of what you find most interesting to pursue. It's most important also that supervisors remember your role in guiding and supporting the student uh, rather than taking over. On the whole, uh, you want to let the student decide where the analysis uh, will go. Uh, the one exception, though, is that students um, might over time always be coming back to the same kind of topic or the same kind of theme. Uh, they might perhaps always focus on the relational dynamics in ministry interactions, but never think about the theological themes that are present. Uh, or vice versa, always thinking about the, the, the theology and the ideas, but forgetting the, the interpersonal uh, dimension. And they might be situations where the supervisor might say, well, hang on, rather than analysing that aspect, perhaps we could think about this uh, instead this time. Uh, you'll also want to keep in mind uh, the, the issues that you identified in the learning agreement uh, as your learning goals for the year um, at the beginning of the year. Uh, where there are experience that connect uh, in some way uh, to those concerns, well, obviously, there are uh, aspects of the experience that are worth paying uh, some uh, close attention to. So we've described the experience. Uh, we've now begun to analyse what's going on. And now we want to turn to our theological sources to find some specific direction for how we ought to think about uh, this uh, situation. Here we're asking the question, what ought to happen? In this situation. So for those who have been a little bit concerned uh, that uh, the Bible hasn't featured much in our process of theological reflection yet, well you can relax because that's what we've come to now. We've started with our experience and our analysis of that experience uh, not as a substitute for learning from God's Word, simply as an alternate entry point uh, for hearing from God's Word. So by answering the question, what ought to happen, we're, we're needing to draw on various passages uh, from Scripture, to draw on different theological themes, lessons from church history, even thinking about the, the established patterns of practice in your own uh, church experience. But it's the, it's the experience itself that's alerted us to different things that, uh, that we need to explore. And of course, this can be a challenging process, a challenging stage of this process, because we need to be drawing from this huge range of, of theological resources, trying to work out where we should go and, and what are the particular themes or parts of Scripture that connect with uh, the issues that, that uh, we're thinking of. That, that can be a challenging thing. But that's sort of our process. We're going from our experience, thinking uh, now about our theology and how our thoughts might be directed uh, by the scriptures, testing our conclusions against the scriptures. Now again, supervisors are helpful here by perhaps suggesting particular passages in the Bible to consider or, or key theological themes uh, to reflect on in relation to the issue that you're exploring. You might be able to help students drill down in, in more detail into the passages or, or themes that they've, they've raised. Realise that this process, of course, isn't therefore a simple job of just finding the right answer. 
or of finding a Bible verse that mentions something about what you've already concluded in your own analysis. You know, it, it may well be difficult to know exactly how the Christian tradition speaks into the situation that you're reflecting on. And it might take some time to be clear on what it is that God is wanting to teach you out of the experience that you're reflecting on. But that's just part of this open dynamic of theological reflection. So be prepared. Be prepared for ending up with more questions than answers. Uh, be prepared for finding partial answers uh, to big questions. And also uh, recognize that the things you might be learning, uh, they may end up being quite removed from the ministry situation that, that prompted them. And again, that's part of the process. So for instance, it might be that you began with describing a difficult conversation that you had with a church member, and then your analysis perhaps identified feelings of, of failure in, in not having responded well to that situation. That might lead you to thinking more about God's grace toward you and his promise of peace. So uh, we're not necessarily discovering anything new here, but the value of the action reflection process is that we're now perhaps able to rediscover this familiar truth, but from now from within this ministry setting. And perhaps now be in a better place to think about how that truth would actually be lived out uh, in that setting or in, or in others like it. That then begins to get us into the, the final question, that is the response question. Uh, how will you respond now? We started this process with our ministry practice, and now in this final question, we return to practice. But it's not just doing the same thing over and over again. Instead, we come to a new or renewed practice, a practice that's been renewed in the light of our theological reflection. And again, there'll be a range of possible responses. Uh, the response might involve going back to the original ministry setting, the, the original ministry practice, and then making adjustments. Uh, I'll, I'll do this differently next time. I'm not going to do that again, but uh, I might do a little bit more of this, um, for instance. Or it might involve identifying new ways of, of taking these theological ideas, these uh, things that we've heard from God's Word, and embodying them, embedding them in, in areas of your life. Perhaps what you learnt about God's sovereignty by reflecting on your practical ministry might have implications for the way that you relate to your parents, uh, for instance. Hey, again, that's the sort of openness that comes from this process. Whatever it is that you think about here, the point is to find concrete ways of living out these things that you've reflected on. Ways to embody biblical themes, ways to lean into theological truths. As I said earlier, this process of action reflection begins with practice, travels via analysis and theological direction, and then returns again to practice. Two thoughts to keep in mind as you work through this process. The first is to remember that these four questions, they do follow a logical order. You know, you, you can't analyze what, what you haven't described. If the, if the description is partial, then, uh, then your analysis is, is un, only going to be patchy. And then if you uh, haven't, haven't analyzed things carefully enough, you don't actually know, you know the significance of what's happening, then th your theological direction might end up being a bit thin. And if there's no theological direction, then whatever renewed practice you have may just be you know, your own uh, directed from your own you know, uh, thoughts or preferences. You know. uh, the, there's an order there, but, but the order doesn't always flow simply from one task to the other in, in these sort of neat steps, because often what happens in our thinking is that we need to sort of jump between them and particularly move back and forth. So it might be that you have described something and you come to analyse it, and as you need to test different assumptions about what's actually happening, you might go back and need to describe things in more detail. Or perhaps that uh, you start uh, looking at um, particular biblical passages that you're, that you're looking at, and that might alert you to new ways of analysing the situation, the situation you know, new ways of explaining what happened that you hadn't thought of before. The point is, be prepared to move back and forward between these four questions, even though ultimately you'll be moving from past practice to new practice through description, analysis, and direction. The second point uh, is to remember to pray for God to guide you in each step of the process. 
ask for God's help to select the experience uh, to reflect on. So, uh, so that God would bring to mind the parts of the experience uh, that you're describing. Uh, ask that God would give you insight in your analysis, that God would speak to you in your biblical and theological reflection, and that God would guide you in making good, faithful, and effective plans uh, for the future. So uh, finally then, um, last part of this video, some logistics on how we're going to use this process in field education. Uh, the first place is that you'd work through these four questions in your weekly ministry journal. Use these questions as a bit of a guide for the sort of things to jot down in your journal week by week. Now think of your journal as a place for the, the sort of the thoughts on the run. So you're not necessarily going to be working through all four questions in depth whenever you write in your journal. That's, that's not the point of it. But you might note down just a couple of descriptive thoughts of things that happened that were, that were noteworthy for some reason. Or maybe it's as you've been going through uh, uh, some ministry practice, you had some thoughts about uh, analysis, some, some explanation about what was driving uh, this behavior. So jot down those thoughts before you lose them. Or perhaps a Bible passage or theological theme that came to mind as you were going about your ministry. So have these four questions in your mind as you go about the things that you do. And just jot down those snippets of ideas that come to you uh, week by week in your journal. So then, secondly, when it comes time for your supervision meeting, uh, now as you prepare for that meeting, you go back over your journal notes, select one incident or one experience that you want to spend some more time reflecting on, and now you want to be working through those four, uh, those four sort of lenses of reflection, doing that in, in uh, sort of a more systematic and detailed way. You know, the simplest way to do it is just to get an A4 piece of paper and, uh, and divide it into four, just fold it either into you know, four long ways or four you know, quadrants, if you like, and just write the, each of the questions in the top of each section and then write your thoughts down uh, about the event. It doesn't need to be more detailed than that, but it, it means that clearly you'll uh, step through or use each of these lenses to examine uh, the situation. Writing your reflection down, though, is really important because it does give you and your supervisor a, a common place to start from when you meet together. So that then when you do meet together, you've both got a copy of, uh, of this written reflection and you're able to talk through each of these sections in turn. So this is the stage when supervisors can ask exploratory questions, asking for more detail in the description, suggesting different lines of analysis, or asking why the student has chosen a particular line of reflection. Uh, supervisors can help students think in more depth about relevant biblical passages or theological themes, or you might have other passages to draw students' attention to, and then you can help refine and direct whatever response the, tu the, the, uh, the student might make uh, in, their, uh, in response to the reflection. So uh, that's the action reflection learning process. Uh, I trust that the process will help you make the most of what your ministry placement holds, both for learning about ministry and also learning about the God whom we serve.